you're having any kind of mental health crisis, we can help. At Team Wellness Crisis Centers, you'll be seen immediately, stabilized in our own private facility, and given all the care you need to get better. Don't wait. Call the Team Wellness Helpline at 1-888-813-TEAM. It could be your lifeline. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Michael Hunter. Forming friendships and other close relationships with our fellow humans is well documented to enhance our physical and mental health and to significantly contribute to longer lives. I think most of you watching would agree that men traditionally relate through sports, watching sports, talking about sports, physically playing sports. Women, on the other hand, traditionally connect through emotional interaction through words. Today we look into one unique and very special instance of how on-field bonding, through soccer in this case, led to personal off-field bonding and how through talking, listening, and trusting, anyone can build a support team they can count on. Stay with us. Tyler Frisbee, Dan Fick, welcome to My Healthy Mind. Thank you. You two are competitors, teammates, and friends. You compete together on a soccer club team called Athletico. How did you two meet? Uh, well, we actually met a little bit before Athletico existed. I was playing for another local club uh, in open soccer, so pretty much any age. Um, and we had brought Dan into the club to help us grow. And at that point, we started a board of directors and Dan and I were both on it. So that's really where the relationship started. And um, I was coming off a knee surgery and didn't know how much longer a 28 year old could play against 18 to 22 year olds. So we thought it'd be a good idea for us to start an over 30s team within the club. I've played soccer pretty much my whole life. Um, it's always been something that's been my outlet, my release, my way of, you know, whatever's going on in my life, I can leave that behind for 90 minutes and, and just focus on the game. Um, so, you know, I, I come from a small town in mid-Michigan where, you know, I had a, I don't want to say strict, but I, I, I would say structured upbringing. Um, and then, you know, I, I went off to college and for the first time in my life, I wasn't playing soccer and I didn't have structure. Depression is something that I had started struggling with in high school, but not really understanding that it was depression, right? I thought, you know, teenagers, everybody has these feelings. Right. You don't really clinically diagnose yourself, I think, at that age. You know, my depression really took hold and I began to self-medicate using alcohol and some experimenting with drugs and really trying to figure out who I was, right? Um, some guys that I became friends with were talking about starting a club team uh, at my university. And, you know, I jumped on that sophomore year and it truly changed my college experience. Did you get an opportunity to like talk about your feelings, talk about those things that you were dealing with internally, or it was just a physical release of the game? You know, I think that physical fitness and mental fitness really go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So even at that point, without the kind of relationship where I could communicate some of the things that I was feeling, <clears throat> I was able to better deal with those feelings because I, I had that physical outlet. I had that passion back in my life. And Dan, what about your background prior to um, soccer, or prior to getting into the club? So I don't, I don't have a, a very significant soccer playing history. I probably played the, 
the, the most and the highest level soccer that I've ever played now. Um, but so it's been fun to kind of learn and, and grow. Um, as far as uh, my family, yeah, same kind of uh, um, uh, highly structured, uh, highly conservative religious family uh, that I grew up in. Um, growing up in school, I was uh, never really interested in academics. Um, really, it was after my undergraduate uh, degree that I kind of switched gears. I had uh, some, I think, significant things happen in my life, including uh, the, the death of a loved one and, and things like that. Um, and so just uh, began being more interested in studying religion and philosophy and so went on to get a graduate degree uh, in religion and then was able to uh, start teaching philosophy uh, in, at a uh, college. Um, and I've been teaching there now, I think, for uh, maybe a dozen years. Um, in that time, too, I had started seeing a therapist. I um, had, had noticed uh, improvement in my own life in, in different ways. And I think I had just mentioned to my therapist one time, um, gosh, this would kind of be an interesting thing to, to, to study and maybe to, to do professionally. So I uh, got uh, another master's degree in uh, clinical mental health counseling. Uh, and so now I practice uh, as an outpatient therapist. So Tyler, you're playing soccer now and all is well or all is better. And then real life happens. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, graduated college, um, walked on a Saturday, moved on Sunday, started my career on Monday, focused all my energy on my new career, quickly earned a promotion that moved me to St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so as a 22-year-old, moved to Missouri not knowing a soul. Um, my role was traveling sales and consulting, so I covered about five states. And so I would fly out to a city on Monday, spend the week there, and fly back to St. Louis on Friday, get my suits dry cleaned, get a haircut, do the same thing again the next week. Didn't have much of an opportunity to build meaningful relationships, wasn't playing soccer, um, was truly overworking myself at the time. I didn't have anything else to do, so I just poured myself into my work. And my depression came back harder than ever. Um, I was self-medicating at the time with alcohol and experimenting with some other substances. Um, the amount of depression that I was feeling, the amount of despair, the hopelessness that had overcome me at this time, where, you know, I didn't I didn't have a friend in the world. I didn't have a job. I had a drinking problem. I was going to lose it all. Just felt like such a failure. Um, went to my medicine closet and took every pill that was there and drew myself a bath. So I went to the kitchen um, got the sharpest knife I had, went back in the tub, and opened up my leg right here. I woke up, that was a Saturday night, Sunday morning. I woke up Tuesday morning in my bed with my mom calling me. For whatever reason, my mom knew something was wrong. They took me by stretcher uh, to the ambulance, to the inner city St. Louis hospital where I was in the psych ward for the day. A condition to my release from the hospital that day was that I commit to starting therapy. I had never been in therapy before. I had never considered therapy before, but um, I agreed. I knew I needed help. I was living with my parents, trying therapy for the first time. And since I didn't have anything better to do, I reached out to my high school soccer coach and asked if I could come help. 
and I started coaching the JV team for my alma mater high school and um, helped out with the varsity team. And that balance between, you know, therapy, traditional therapy, and the therapy of being back on the soccer field in some capacity for five days a week, it, uh, it kept me alive. Next time you need to see a doctor, don't go to a doctor. Call Team Wellness Online. With Team Wellness Online, you can see a doctor or a therapist without waiting, usually within 24 hours. Your televisit is private and 100% secure, and you can take all the time you want. So next time you need to see a doctor or a therapist, call Team Wellness Online at 888-813-TEAM to make a virtual appointment, and we'll come to you. How did you recognize the bridge between mental health and soccer? One of the things I love about this, this team or this club is that it, it has been a natural progression, or at least my, my perspective on it has been a natural progression. And actually, you know, despite all of the, the destruction that, you know, that COVID has, has done, uh, I think it actually really benefited our group of guys because, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of places to go. We didn't have much to do. And so, you know, I think it was around that time, maybe we had, we had created this kind of group chat with the team. And um, I think maybe we had created it before COVID. But, you know, once we were all just kind of at home doing nothing, I mean, it just kind of exploded. Or, and again, that's at least my perspective where it just kind of exploded and and it just seems like we have not looked back from there and once we were able to kind of gather again and play soccer it just became um, more and more important for it to be uh, more than just soccer and as team players and as you're getting to know each other there you're a formal therapist, you definitely have tuned in to your need for therapy and, and how you cope. How did you see it start to spread out among the team where you recognize, man, this is better than we could have expected? It was very personal for me. I had this group of guys that were supporting me um, in ways that at the time, they didn't understand how they were supporting me, right? But just having a couple days a week and then having a beer after a training, right? It was, it was keeping me going. So it, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was a moment for me where it clicked that this was more than just soccer, right? It was more than just a physical activity for me. It was more than just like, I like playing soccer, right? It's the, the physical and the mental fitness. It was the, the community aspect of it. It was the support that I didn't know that I had been missing. And Dan, when you are at gatherings and you're with the team, with a professional eye, when you see them interacting, do you tell yourself, wow, this is very therapeutic or, you know, any of that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's, a, <clears throat> there's kind of a running joke uh, within the team, too, that when we go out for, for dinner or have events that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm kind of psychologically analyzing everyone right to write a book on the on the team uh one day which is is not the case but from a from an ethical standpoint uh therapists aren't uh formally allowed to work with with friends and so um i i've i've really tried i mean it, it's it's difficult for me to divorce uh, the philosophical and mental health training that I have, right, from, from life. But, I, but I've really tried to approach the relationships in this team in, in, a, in a warm way rather than maybe a, a cold clinical way. Um, but yeah, I think that the, 
you know, again, the, the natural progression of, of how things have grown. For me, I'm, a, I think, a, a relatively quiet and, and guarded. I think that's kind of my natural um, demeanor. And so, uh, which I think, again, comes from my own trauma background. But uh, so in order for me to, um, you know, be willing to uh, invest or, or be invested in, I uh, have to feel safe. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Wellness Center has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. They get a chance to know that somebody's on their team. We think nobody else feels the pain that we feel. We feel like I'm the only one, but that is so untrue. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Working through my problems and, and seeing that I'm not the only one that has to cope has really brought me to a place where now it's okay to talk about it. Because if you keep stuff to yourself, you know, you, you can't overcome. We all need one another. Team Wellness Center, you are not alone. We started this team to play soccer. We want to play good soccer. We're very competitive, right? All, you know, everything that we've talked about, culture and the togetherness, that doesn't mean that when we step on the field, we're not there to win, right? We want to play a good brand of soccer. We want to play together effectively. And at the end of the day, we want to win the games. Um, and so if there are games where we struggle. There's friction. With that, yeah, there's friction. Yeah, if we don't play well, if, if we're having an off night, if we run into a, a competitor that's, that's hot that game, you know, there's difficulties. And for the most part, we deal with them on the field, right? Or at the bar after the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, you know, we've built this culture and we've built these relationships in a way that we can have those honest conversations where I can, you know, Occasionally put my finger in a guy's chest and say, I'm not getting enough out of you on the field today. Um, and he can give me his opinion of, of how I played and, <laughs> and, and how I, I, you know, have a hand in, in the results as well. And, and we can move on from that. We could talk about things we want to do better. Um, but, you know, really at the end of the day, everybody on this team wants to keep playing with everybody else that's on this team. And, you know, I, I spoke earlier, you know, we had a rough start. We weren't very good. We still have a lot of those guys on the team. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys have come and gone. We've lost some very skilled players. Um, we've, we've had some guys that didn't always fit the culture that, you know, chose to leave and, and go pursue other things. We had some guys that, you know, they just want to play soccer. They don't want everything else that we have. Right, they don't, they don't want the relationships, they don't want the emotional investment that we've built in this team. They just wanna show up, kick the ball, go home, right? And if, you know, we're not the right fit for everybody. Um, but you know, the guys that we have here now, over the years, we have learned each other's games, we've learned each other's personalities, we've learned each other's lives, and you know, that is, culminated in 2023 with us being division champs and next year we will congratulations yeah thanks we'll move up and um play against better teams <laughs> and we'll see how that goes we'll see how the how the friction goes there would you agree with the science loosely that men generally relate to each other in an action-oriented perspective while women more emotional or with their words? Yeah, I think what, what I would say to that is, <clears throat> yes, I agree with that. However, I think the reason that that is, is due to st 
stigmas and cultural norms, right? So um, I, I think, you know, perhaps I can put men on blast here a little bit because I am a man, right? I think that, um, or, or when I look back on my own life, I think a lot of desire to be action oriented rather than emotion oriented was due to fear, right? Um, or there are specific emotions that are appropriate, right, for men, anger, aggression. Um, but, but the reality is that uh, men can also be sensitive and kind and caring, right? Uh, and those are all important emotions too, um, even for athletes um, or you know guys that are covered in tattoos, right? Like those are all all important things. Um, so so yes, although I agree that probably most people would approach that as such. Um, certainly, the work that I do with my male clients, as well as maybe the informal work that I do, you know, with, with my friends and, and teammates is to, to create environments where, um, where we can emote in, in different ways than just anger and aggression. I agree with Dan, like it's very societal. Society has told us men, you're not allowed to be emotional you're not allowed to be vulnerable. You can't say what you're really feeling. You need to bear down and go about your business, right? And <clears throat> really it takes, it takes a lot of time and communication and trust and building the relationships to, to have what we have in the team where you've got a group of guys who are comfortable saying, I'm struggling or I need help. So what advice, what final advice would you give to the people watching today if they found themselves in need of some support or a team where they could share what's on their mind? What would you tell them? Well, first of all, I've watched the show and you guys have had some amazingly inspirational people on the show. And a lot of the times they are part of organizations or develop their own organizations of outreach and support um, around mental health. And I've, I feel lucky just to be sitting here and talking about what we do because we're just guys that play soccer, right? But that's, I mean, that's the community that we've built because it makes sense for us, right? It's, I'm passionate about soccer, so I put myself in that, in that space and it allows me to have a level of comfort and to build and to have the culture around it. So really it's, you know, whatever you're passionate about, there's other people that are passionate about that too, right? And if you are looking for, if, if you need community, there are people that care about the same things you do and it's just like, you can build what we've built. Or, you know, if you wanna play soccer, you can come be a part of it too. Um, but you know, find your, understand your passion and you'll find your people. I think, uh, and try therapy. Yes. And yeah, I, I think I would say too that, um, you know, formal therapy is, I mean, I know I'm biased, right? As a, as a therapist and as, and as someone who is in therapy, I think a, a big part too is you know, even before you start looking for a group is, is realizing that you deserve that, right? I think often um, when, when individuals are struggling with uh, maybe self-esteem or self-worth issues, they, they don't, and then that's part of the, the difficulty, right, related to isolating and things like that, is that they, they don't think that they deserve to, to be part of a group or to uh, share their, their, their needs with others. Right. So, and then, yeah, I would probably again, share what, what Tyler has said. I think finding again for us, it's soccer and, and 
you know, it's, it again, it has turned into other things too, right? Pizza eating, like going out on boats, Boating, you know, yeah. like there's all types of things, right? That we um, have golf, found, golfing. yeah, golf that we have found that we're passionate about, right? Started with soccer and has kind of branched out from there. But I, I think it's, uh, or it can be really beneficial. It's a lot of hard work. It's, it's uh, can be scary. Um, but I think the dividends that it pays um, is worth it. Anxiety, depression, can happen to anyone for all kinds of reasons, especially during difficult and trying times that no one should have to go through alone. At Team Wellness, trained, compassionate, caring professionals will get you into the right treatment so you get better. Team Wellness, you are not alone. Thank you for watching today as we explored how you can find a support team you can count on. If you'd like to learn more about this or any other mental health issue, visit us on our website at MyHealthyMind.com, on Facebook at My Healthy Mind Show, or on Twitter. We'll see you next week for another edition of My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it. If you missed any of our past episodes, you can view them on YouTube you'll find a complete list on our website. And as you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, please feel free to comment and to suggest ideas for new shows.